Haaretz is now reporting that Israel did in fact lie about or embellish some of the atrocities that were committed by Hamas on October 7th. Now they were clear in noting that there were in fact atrocities committed by Hamas on October 7th. But there were certain things that were unproven and later shown to be complete lies or embellishments. So let's go through them one by one. First, they talk about the atrocities that are verified. And these atrocities make it abundantly clear to me that the IDF and the Israeli government really had no reason to lie or embellish anything that Hamas committed. Because these atrocities are bad enough. As Haaretz notes, members of Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad, as well as other Gazans who entered Israel, committed war crimes and crimes against humanity. They viciously murdered about 1,200 people, most of them unarmed civilians. They abducted about 240 people, both civilians and soldiers, including women and children, even a baby. So that's been verified. And those atrocities are bad enough without having to embellish anything, without having to lie about anything. There's more. A variety of evidence is available on Hamas's cruelty, which includes the murder of parents in front of their children and children in front of their parents. There were sexual assaults, rapes, and mutilations, while some victims were bound and some of the dead were desecrated. Some homes were burned with the people still inside. So again, Haaretz is abundantly clear, these atrocities happened. But again, certain things were lied about, certain things were embellished, and they provided specific examples. Ishay Cohen, a journalist for the ultra-orthodox website Kakar Hashabat, interviewed Lieutenant Colonel Yaron Buskila of the IDF, their Gaza division. Buskila talked about babies who had been hung on clotheslines. His remarks were cited by a host of Twitter personalities around the world. Cohen wrote that he was later informed that the story was inaccurate and deleted the post. Quote, why would an army officer invent such a horrifying story? I was wrong, he added. The story was false, but Hamas terrorists did desecrate corpses during the massacre, especially the bodies of soldiers. There were also beheadings and cases of dismemberment. Now, what there isn't any evidence of is babies being beheaded. So it appears that that was also made up by the IDF and I, was incredibly angry with people who denied that that happened. Because in my mind, I was under the, even, even at this point in my life when I shouldn't be naive about anything. When, where I should be as jaded as humanly possible. Where I shouldn't believe anything that comes out of anyone's mouth and I should be super, I should find everyone suspect. I just couldn't believe that anyone would even dream up a lie like that. The beheadings of 40 babies, I just couldn't believe that anyone would lie about that. But I guess I was wrong. I have more evidence of what they lied about in just a moment. Cenk, do you want to jump in? Yeah, I once publicly said uh, that line that now turns out to be propaganda about beheading baby son. I'm sorry about that. Uh, and I definitely should have known better. Uh, these, there's classic propaganda that comes out out of every kind of war and conflict. Uh, the one that's the most common is also one of the ones that Haaretz disproves here, which is uh, stabbing pregnant women in, in, in the abdomen and killing their babies in them. It's in every story of every war where you want to paint the other people as monsters, okay? And so when you see that story, I'm telling you right now ahead of time, nine out of 10 times, it's a total fabrication. And why do they do it? Because it's the thing that revolts us the most. Imagine poor pregnant woman and the guys, you know, bayoneting or knifing the, the thing. In reality, what happened? Turns out that it was a woman who was. By the way, these are all terrible, like Anna said in the first place. It doesn't matter, you don't have to make up things. The things that happened were already horrific enough. A pregnant woman was shot and she lost the baby in the hospital. So there's two babies that died apparently. Now two babies is already infinitely too many. But okay, just there's a story about decomposing babies we're gonna get to in a second in a, in a hospital in, in Gaza. There's three babies that died in that one. There was eight that died in Al Shifa Hospital. So that's 11 babies right there. So now, what would Dana Bash do? She would come out and say, how dare you not condemn the two babies? What are you bothering to quote an Israeli newspaper for? Giving you the reality of what happened and didn't happen. Well, how about the 11 Palestinian babies? No, that means you don't care about the Israeli babies. No, 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 
I'm sorry, but if you're all going around saying we well, should just be one sided, you should only care about Israeli civilians. You should never care about the Palestinians. Sorry, I don't agree and you're monsters. So those two babies that died in Israel, it's an it's horrific and unbelievably wrong. But don't bother lying about decapitated babies. And for IDF, you're nuts if you trust a word that the IDF says. Nothing but lies 24 seven. And if you believe them, you're just being so biased. It's ridiculous. But you know, like one other thing I'll say is, you know, there there was evidence of atrocities committed by Hamas, you know, after October 7th. You see those videos all over social media. And it, again, like you I just find it so hard to believe that they would feel the need to embellish or add additional lies to the atrocities that Hamas actually did commit. And yeah, so like, I, don't, I don't find it hard to believe it at all. Netanyahu is a serial liar. He lies about almost no, no, everything. I get it. He instructs, and his right wing government is filled wall to wall, rim to rim, with liars. And all they ever do is lie about Palestinians. So, and by the way, it's not just about Israel, guys. In every conflict, no matter what their ethnicity is, people always lie about atrocities. And so, but then when you tell the truth about Palestinian atrocities, they're like, who cares? They're just Palestinians. Back out all the focus on Israel. All the focus on Israel. Don't you dare mention Palestinian babies. Hold on, but let me finish my thought, Jenk. Because the other thing I was going to say is even when you are skeptical of the way corporate media handles, especially this type of story, right? Unfortunately, the way they report things ends up unwitting to you, like seeping into your own mind. And so think about how they're immediately willing to question the veracity of the death toll in Gaza because they say, oh, it's, it's, it's controlled by Hamas, it's controlled by Hamas, it's controlled by Hamas. The Palestinian health ministry controlled by Hamas, you can't believe the death toll numbers, even though historically speaking, they've always been accurate. Even though there are other humanitarian organizations who have their own death toll count um, and, and they make it clear. In fact, um, the, there's a European group who has the current death toll at 21,000 and the Gaza health ministry has it at like 15,000 at the moment. Meaning that they're actually more conservative with the death toll numbers that they put out. But at the same time, when it comes to anything the IDF has to say, well, corporate media takes it at face value, they report it at face value, and they never question it. And so I think what ends up happening is that kind of culture, that way of covering the story, slowly but surely starts seeping into everyone's minds where you think that the IDF is more credible than, than anything. And, and it's just not. This, this story makes it abundantly clear to me. I wanna give you some other examples. According to sources, including Israel's National Insurance Institute, kibbutz leaders and the police on October 7th, one baby was murdered, 10 month old Mila Cohen. She was killed with her father, Ohad, on kibbutz Beri. So uh, the notion that 40 uh, uh, babies were decapitated, it's just unfounded, hasn't been proven. Um, and in fact, more and more outlets, including Haaretz, uh, do not believe that that actually happened. According to the National Insurance Institute, five other children ages six or under were murdered. 14 children ages 12 to 15 were killed in Israel in rocket strikes launched from Gaza but not at massacre sites in southern Israeli communities. And also there's no evidence that children from several families were murdered together, rendering inaccurate Netanyahu's remark to US President Joe Biden that Hamas terrorists took dozens of children, tied them up, burned them and executed them. So that was a lie. What Netanyahu said there was an absolute lie. Finally, apparently there was an allegation that by a Zaka member. So Zaka is an ultra orthodox organization or group. They reportedly spoke about the body of that pregnant woman found at Kibbutz Beri, whose abdomen had been cut open. So Jenk already shared with you how that was a lie. Well, that same person, that same Zaka member, repeated his account to Haaretz, adding that he actually saw this woman at house 426 on the Kibbutz. He said this, it was full of blood, he said. When we turned her over, we saw that the abdomen was open, a knife was next to her, and we saw the fetus attached to the umbilical cord, and she had been shot from behind. He said that he found the woman next to the house's entrance and that a six or seven year old boy was found shot in the safe room. But here's the other part of the lie, aside from the pregnant woman. But no children, six or seven, or near those ages were killed. 
House 426 is in the Ashlem neighborhood, which largely houses kibbutz veterans, older people. So the notion that there was a six or seven year old child found there who was also shot uh, was, was a lie. And here's another story that was spread just a few weeks ago. United Hatzala President Eli Beer told of a baby that was placed in an oven and burned to death. But this story also is not true. 10 month old Mila Cohen was murdered in the massacre along with the baby still in the womb of her mother who died after her mother was shot on her way to the hospital. So again, it's like, no, no, these are, there, there are atrocities that happen that are bad enough, that are bad enough. That would have made everyone on Israel's side after what Hamas did, that would want everyone, that would want Israel to um, root out Hamas following these uh, atrocities. But they had to go the extra mile and lie about all sorts of things, which I just don't understand. I know why they do it. So uh, in another line that Haaretz broke down, um, they said that they hung babies on clotheslines. So why do you say such outrageous things and, bur and burning babies in ovens and decapitating babies? Because you wanna uh, ha build in the minds of your own citizens and citizens throughout the world that the other side is Nazis. And so what you're about to do to them, which is murder their civilians at extraordinary rates, is totally okay. Because they were Nazis who had it coming. So they're monsters, they're not human. So when we murder them, don't worry, we're not murdering actual human beings. We're murdering the Nazis who were burning children alive. Okay, yep. that's why they do it. That's why that because the IDF was planning to murder as many Palestinian civilians as possible. If you catch feelings over that, I'm sorry, but they've done it in every conflict. In every conflict, they kill about at least ten times as many Palestinian civilians as as Israelis that were killed, whether they were civilians or soldiers. And then they go, oh, did we miss again? Oh, we missed again and again and again. Kali, gee, we have the worst name in the world. All we do is massacre civilians after civilians after civilians. And then Hamas is perfectly safe in the tunnels. And we showed you the video of the tunnels totally unaffected. But Kali, gee, I guess we couldn't hit the tunnels after we dropped thousands of 2,000 pound bombs in the middle of refugee camps, buildings, etc. Look, if you believe the IDF, you're a sucker. They never tell the truth. Uh, all of this is total propaganda. And again, for the 80, 88th time in a row, or the 112th time in a row, the atrocities were bad enough. You didn't have to lie about them. But you just can't help yourself because they were all of those right wing cabinet ministers knew they were going to go and kill an extraordinary amount of Palestinian babies and women and children and men and civilians. So that's why they put out those statements. So you, you think, oh, it's justified to kill all of them. And I want to give credit to Haaretz here, an Israeli newspaper that did a terrific job of outlining the actual atrocities and how terrible they were and the lies. And that's journalism and thank you for having that. Thanks for watching the video guys. We also love it if you hit the join button below because that makes you a member and members allow us to be independent, honest. We could be as progressive as we want, no corporate media influence and that's all because of you guys. We love doing the show with our members. Hit the join button, become one of the Young Turks.